from the depth instant tutorial. This is an aircraft carrier, my largest one and only one. Under the runway, it has some cool things in order to make it dock and undock these beautiful storm attack swarmers whenever there is an enemy nearby. Like this. As commissioned officer, Admiral Scoobrox did point out to me, I still haven't made my carrier tutorial, which I promised to do. Basically how to make an aircraft carrier vehicle. We're gonna make a miniature model of it on the old Filke. So um, you have been asking for it since I made the Eugene super battle carrier. So uh, here it is. Now I'm gonna show you how to make a carrier in from the depth. This is neither an airplane tutorial and it's not a boat tutorial. This is a normal boat and the only thing that is making it an aircraft carrier is that it's having an aircraft that it can drop off whenever there is an enemy. The vehicle you're building on should be a normal boat that has some type of engine and some type of AI. You know, it can move about and it has an AI to detect enemies and also detection in order to detect enemies. So there we are. We have a boat. Beautiful. How to make an aircraft carrier? Well, first you need somewhere to put your aircraft. The most popular choice for making a little platform to have aircrafts on is to have it of uh, a rubber material like this. Rubber cancels the damage that block against the block collisions between vehicles would have otherwise have made. However, if you set it up correctly, you would most likely not need a uh, rubber. Basically, if anything doesn't go as planned or if uh, your aircraft accidentally crashes into the plate it's supposed to be on because it gets damaged, for example, when it's trying to lift off, the collision between the aircraft and the carrier will be cancelled. That's why we can have a rubber plate. If you want to save materials, you can even make a rubber plate out of square corners like this if you want to save costs. Since our controlling equipment will be EMP susceptible, we will spawn them on a little rubber platform under the platform we're going to use for the dock. The reason why we want to EMP insulate these components is that if your mothership gets damaged, EMP might take out the ability for it to recall the drones, which would be pretty not handy. The components you need are under MISC. So go down to miscellaneous and here we got some different things we need. One thing we need is a docking station. We're gonna choose the one meter variant because it's a little bit smaller. Now we're going to take this docking station and we're going to rotate it so it points upwards. The smaller version just takes less space. That's all it does. Now you can of course spawn your vehicle not above a platform, but on the side of, a, of your vehicle, which you can do too, it's up to you. But here I just showed a normal est way, as I imagine it. Then for later use, you also need a sub vehicle spawner. So we're gonna spawn a sub vehicle here, which also will be facing upwards. Now we just need something to control it. We're gonna go to control, and we're gonna select some ACBs to color them brightly for uh, making it a little bit easier to understand there. To decrease the chances uh, or risk of it, of having collision with your vehicle, we're also gonna spawn two extra blocks, which we are going to check out a little bit later. Anyways, so how do we set this up? Well, we need to do like this. We need to go into this one, and we should check here in the settings for a trigger. So what is the trigger? Well, the most obvious trigger is range. So if there is an enemy between zero and 5,000 meters, basically, if your vehicle detects an enemy at all, it will spawn a vehicle. If your vehicle, for example, the aircraft you are spawning is unable to fight anything underwater, you can instead say altitude. You can say if there spawns an enemy between say zero and I don't know how high your airplane goes. Let's say your airplane can shoot maximum up to this level. It can't fight anything above this. Well, then we can set it to this. So it kind of spawns if there is an altitude there. 
However, we're gonna make it general purpose. So in my case, there will be zero to infinity. If we have an enemy detected at all, we're going to launch our aircraft. Then you need to go over to target. At target, you can see all these different things that you can get confused about, but the only thing you're looking for is actually docking stations. And just scroll down here and we're gonna set it to release all assigned vehicles. So we're gonna release all assigned vehicles like this. And here you can see the range. If you set it to max, this will control all of the potential docking stations and aircrafts. If you have multiple aircrafts, you can make one control station have control all uh, over all of them. But if you want them to be released in waves and something like that, you should set the effect ratio so it only controls the particular docker that it's uh, assigned at. I like to assign them by uh, waves and not have a central command, but have uh, local commands that control each uh, kind of docking plate. So I set the range to something like that. Then we can copy this setting by Ctrl C, go over to this and press Ctrl V to paste it. Now we go into it and set the condition. And we're just gonna check this box inverted. Under target and action, we're gonna go down here and we're going to recall all vehicles. Basically, if there is no enemy, we recall the vehicles. And if you chose altitude or some other trigger, like bearing or whatever you want, um, you of course do the same, but reverse here. Very simple. We're gonna go through the green blocks a little bit later, but before that, we need to spawn an aircraft. Since we're having a pretty small destroyer to launch it from, I'm gonna choose one of my smaller jet fighters. There we go, we have spawned the aerobics jet fighter. Beautiful. So now we can go in here and go to the docking station, the tractor beam. The tractor beam, the block is called the tractor beam. The block here is called the docking station. That's thus the confusion. Click Q, click selection, click the thing you wanna select, apply selection. And you can see here now that the tractor beam is activated. And that is automatically activated because of course, um, we already set up the commands. Now we should be adjusting hold the distance and also elevation and azimuth. So we can kind of reach a level which we think is nice for the hold values. The safe approach values here and the safe distance and stuff like that only really matters if you're trying to cram it in and out of a really tight space. Um, that's a little bit custom setup for every situation and this is an open platform, so we can kind of ignore these safe approach settings. We're gonna get into some stuff like that later. Now usually I like to have my aircrafts at a little angle like this to make them easy launch. However, to make it look a little bit nice, we're going to just set it just like this. Now, you might think it would be nice to move this back and forth and to the sides. If you wanna do that, you actually need to move your tractor beam. If you need to move your tractor beam, you can hover over the tractor beam, click Ctrl C, remove it, place it where we think you wanna have it, and press Ctrl V. There we go. Also, a nice little quality of life feature. If your vehicle happens to be damaged, it can always be a good idea to, under the platform, have a little repair tentacle. You can have the tentacle tentacle, or you can have the compact repair tentacle. And this will make it so that any docked vehicle on this plate will be regenerated ever so slowly. Isn't that quite nice? To make this vehicle automatically load in, whenever you're loading your aircraft carrier, you'll need to have the sub-object spawner here, which, well, we added before. Just click Q here. Select a vehicle that can be your drone, only vehicles on your fleet. So what you need to do in order to get it in your fleet, well, you can also use it um, if you spawned it using a spawner from this vehicle, it would automatically be in your fleet. But basically, you'll just need to merge these fleets to do that, just click E, 
select the jet fighter and here you can see merge these forces together into a fleet. Here we go. The Filka class destroyer is flagship and this one is uh, well a thing. So now we can go back to this little menu here and we can now select the F aerobics jet fighter. Confirm selection. Now you can select whatever distance you can safely spawn it on without crashing into your vehicle because it will be automatically docked when it's spawned. But if you don't do this, you'll need to load in your uh, well, sub vehicles every time and that's not something you want to do. After all, an aircraft carrier is a carrier that comes with some aircrafts pre-attached. At least in my brain. This is not a drone spawner. It is an aircraft carrier. The, ca the aircrafts already exists and the purpose of this thing is to carry them. So that's why. And if we spawn a small little vehicle, it doesn't work. And why does this happen, you might wonder. The quick fix for dealing with that issue, that would be a really ugly quick fix, and that involves putting rubber poles on your, or like rubber wheels or whatever on your aircraft in order to make it bump rubber against rubber but that's that's just a helping hand it's not what we're gonna do so the reason why we had these green blocks spawned before is to solve this exact issue first we'll just go and copy the settings from these blocks so we can uh, respectively so we can save some time so if there is an enemy we're going to go here and at docker, we're going to instead set distance. We're going to set distance to, yeah, something like maybe 30 meters should be enough. And we're going to check these values here in the tractor beam and see what distance we have now. It's seven. So when there is no enemy, uh, then we're going to have the uh, holding distance set to be seven. Now you can see it was pre-assigned 10. That's why it's it's just changing the value here. So we're gonna set this to seven and it's gonna set at this nice value. In order to do this distance change, we'll need to put a little delay on release all assigned vehicles. And this is also how you release things in waves. So effect delay, this will have an effect delay. It will be released after half a second. If I, for example, set the next vehicle to one second and the next to one and a half second, they will be released in waves, which is pretty cool. We can also thus set the tractor beam distance change to a, a little delay too for the other ones so that they kind of get up in the air and then get released in uh, waves. Pretty basic like that. So if we now spawn a little enemy, here we can see it goes up like that. And now I believe <laughs> our forces will make short work of the vanguard. And as soon as we have dealt with this foe to the army of Jimidism, you shall see it returning. There we go. It now is getting its command that it must be docked to the mothership. So it flies in like this and you can see it just phases through everything and gets securely attached. Very nice like that. Well, we basically made an aircraft carrier. So what do we do now? Well, you'll just review your settings if it works like intended check everything that it is like you want it make sure you have selected this here and that it spawns at an acceptable level so it can be docked again just for fun let's set this to 200 meters so you can kind of see how it works and i will just do like this make sure it's yeah we have selected it here and the settings are looking really nice great now we'll just need to save this vehicle so if we have done everything as correctly as I showed you here, you should be able to load your vehicle and it should spawn. You can see it spawned 200 meters up in the air and now it goes down there and got automatically docked. 
and then whenever you launch and foe, it will be going up in the air safely to resume its combat operations until the foe has been dealt with. There we go. The foe is killed and we will be zooming back to Mothership. And Doc. I hope this video helped you and if it did, do leave a like and subscribe for future ones. Well, now go out there and make your beautiful aircraft carriers to make the army of Jimidism very proud. See you next time. This is Jimidism signing out.